What? You're just happy? I need to go walk. Andy's happy. Andy's, Wanna come in? Andy's, Andy's in a good mood today. He's we're, he is? we're SEO yeah. and stuff. You're in a good mood today? Yeah, very good mood. Why a lot of good things are happening? Yeah, get shit done, make it happen. Seriously? That's why you're in a good mood? Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, not on my last game, but... Did you see that I, what? like, I basically played with one arm? Yeah, you're the... Yeah, you literally had one arm. I literally yeah. played... Uh, I the really basketball. hurt myself lifting. Right now I'm on aspirin and I don't take medicine, so anything like, like ever, so like I is feel it, is okay. It like right here? Yeah, it's That's right here. That happened here. to me. I, I literally thought I was like, it's right there, like, when you touch it. It's, it it just feels, feels better. Like you pull the muscles. But then you were fine from lifting? Yeah. And then you were fine next day? Yeah, like two days. Yeah, I think that's, I'm hoping that's the case. All right. All right. Hey, Gary, I got a question for you. Why are so many people. Oh, I don't need to see him. I'm just going to go. Okay. Ready? Yeah, 110? One, yeah. One Nine. Nine. Um, you ask questions and I answer them. This is the Ask Gary B Show. On this episode, we talk about why people are scared about Snapchat. We talk ego, and I talk to my future grandchildren. <laughs> hey, everybody! This is Gary Vaynerchuk, and this is episode 110 of the Ask Gary V Show. I'm in a very, very good mood because Andy's in a good mood. He just came in. Andy's in a very good mood. Holy crap! You got? Did you get your head bumped into? Yeah, Tiger. Like crushing. zone in here. Well, this is from basketball this morning. It's amazing. Was that on the last play that ended yeah, the game? Point, you yeah. won the game yeah. on that play. I'm impressed with you. I like Andy. Uh, um, AJ got married this weekend. It was tremendous. Uh, that was massively enjoyable. One of the best weekends of my entire life. Um, I, uh, I'm uh, in good spirits. There's a ton of good stuff going on with business. I'm extremely fired up for the Ask Gary V show and the podcast. You've been noticing, if you're paying attention, over the last two or three days, I've been really pushing the podcast. I've decided that I want to shoot up the rankings on the iTunes score. Number 14 today? 13 in the business section. I want to be number one. But Ferris is going to own that. He's like all in. And the video siphons. I noticed in a lot of comments people are going to the video because I get it. Super attractive, very charismatic on video. I get that, but um, really want to give a huge shout out to everybody who's listening right now in a commute. And more importantly, Vayner Nation. Serious right hook alert. D Rock, do something. Right hook alert. Like, make something so I can start doing that more often. Vayner Nation. Serious right hook alert. Even if you're not going to listen to it, I'll take the download because I'm hacking. I want to shoot up the ranks because the discovery for people seeing me who don't know who I am, which is Believe it or not, 99% of the world uh, is an opportunity there and so I'm enjoying that. I'm also very seriously considering uh, answering a unique question every single episode exclusively to the podcast first. It'd be good because for the people then they don't have to listen through the whole thing so maybe we do it first. Maybe I start the show with like here's the, maybe even before the intro D-Rock, I'm like here's the exclusive answer. This way for the people that are really hardcore that want to hear every goddamn answer, uh, they can just listen to that part on the podcast and then move on with their merry way if they're video watching. So a little hacking going on on my end. Um, my Instagram game is up, 110,000, 106,000 followers right now. Serious, I'm excited about that. And uh, just really fired up about the show, really enjoying uh, the process. Uh, you guys know I love the journey. So many new fans popping up because of this show. Uh, and that's super humbling and I appreciate it. So big shout out, leave in the comments on YouTube and Facebook if you are somebody who just discovered my content in the last six months or less. I'd like to triple down on my thank yous and appreciation. Um, And all you OGs, you know how much love I have for you but would love to give a little emoji high five to some new peeps. Stunwin, let's get into the show. Indy on vacation. <laughs> this is old school. It's a throwback Mon Tuesday uh, with Steve asking the questions. Let's go. Chad asks, at what point in time, if at all, should a brand not use social media? Steve. Chad. Chad. <laughs> Chad, great question. Uh, uh, you know, the funny thing is, is 
all that social media is is another, first of all, social media is a term, a slang term for the current state of the internet right now. The term we used only six or seven years ago was web 2.0 sites. Now we call them social media sites. We may call them something else in the future, mobile native, you know, virtual this, but there's always a term to talk about the 20 to 30 sites that matter. Social media sites happen to mean the sites that people actually go to, the apps that people actually go to in a mobile first world, which is what we live in now. And so they, the, the, people are confused if there's something, called, there is a thing called social media. There isn't. I mean, anything that's a content site now, anything that like, people refer to like podcasts as social media. It's just a term of relevancy. Um, and so it's a communication uh, portal, right? You know, and there's some high, high, high end brands that think if they're on Twitter, or Snapchat, or Instagram, or Facebook, that they they cheapen their brand equity. Uh, I would say Apple, right? Apple is a brand that does very little. I, I still think they're doing basically nothing um, uh, on social, or at least definitely not on Twitter. I don't think, right? Like, like so, you know. Look, do I think that there is a place where brands should not do it? Only if it's a shtick. If it's a very well thought out, we are so exclusive, we're going against the grain, and they make it part of their overall thing, that they emphasize in other channels of communication their lack of being there. It may position to a small group that is anti-establishment, that they think that's cool, and, uh, and so, but more and more what people need to recognize is that social media is going through a legitimacy curve right now. Over the next five to 10 years, this will be the establishment. Facebook and Twitter and, well, I don't know about Twitter, I'm worried about Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat. They're gonna be the establishment. They're, you know, it's like banner ads or the internet itself. It's just gonna be the establishment, my friends. And so I think eventually that's going to run out. It's, it's, if you wanna sell something, you need to be able to communicate to the world. And if everybody's eyes and ears are in a certain place called the internet, um, I think you need to be there. And I think, uh, I think you have a tough argument to justify the upside versus the downside of not communicating in the portals where people are living. Ben. Oh, I know Ben Phillips. Hey Gary, I got a question for you. Why are so many people scared of Snapchat, especially in the marketing field? A lot of them say they don't understand it, but I feel like that's a cop-out. What do you think? Ben, I think it's ironic that you wore a yellow shirt when you asked that question. I wonder if that was strategic, if it was a big daps to you. Uh, Also enjoying the beard and the glasses look, you look really legit. I think that people are not practitioners. I would argue that 95% of people in marketing, 95% of people in marketing at digital and social agencies on the brands and the business sides actually don't know how Snapchat works. Actually have never went through all four screens of Snapchat, to the left, to the right, twice, and the camera itself. Literally have not done that, literally. I would argue that 70% of marketers have never touched one of the Discover tabs on Snapchat because they are just not practitioners. And Snapchat has a context and a cadence and a system that is not native to a lot of people because it's left to right, not up and down like all the other apps. And so there's some learning. Like it actually takes four to five minutes of thought and energy to really understand how Snapchat works if you've never used it before. And that's about four to five minutes worth of actual practitionership that most people don't apply. They like to headline read that the kids send sex pictures to each other and they like to be old white men even if they're not old white men, right? Plenty of 23 year old Hispanic women acting like old white men because they're not practitioner slang term old white men to like you suck shit. Like you're not putting in the work, you're tired, you're not innovating, you stink. You stink, you stink. And so why do I think people are scared of Snapchat? Because they stink. Because most people suck at marketing, most people just wanna do what they've already known, they don't evolve. I wake up every morning of my life trying to put myself out of business because it's a lot better to do that than have somebody else do it for me. And that's how I live and that's how I'm gonna live until I'm an old white man acting like a 14 year old chick, right? Because that's just the way I'm gonna roll. And so as you can see, I got a little excited on this answer because it strikes a real nerve to what's actually happening in society because as we are living through the second industrial revolution, the, the real culture shift of the last half century, this internet thing, getting to maturity with mobile devices at scale, computing on our fingertips at all times at scale, the whole kit and caboodle, society, the whole thing, everyone, all of us, everyone, 
when that hits, and that's here, and it's starting to really hit, everything changes forever. Everything, everything. Marketing just happens to be the part that I'm most interested in talking about. Uh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 110, the old white guys suck. <sighs> Mike wants to know, are you building an ecosystem or an ego system? Michael, this is, tr- this is a great, great question. And I think the answer is both. Um, I think the true answer is both. Uh, I think that I've created a infrastructure of free content um, and interaction and organization that has created an ecosystem. It's, it's super hard to argue. I mean, Wait to Crushed It comes out. The book that follows the 400 people, the f- which is 400 of the 4,000 people that read Crush It and their lives changed. Go read the comments in the Facebook posts and in the Instagram posts around this show of people literally in the last 30 days, because I'm reading them all, just talking about how like weird, like watching 100 episodes of this has changed their life. They make more money, like real life stuff. Um, so that's an ecosystem. On the flip side, it's very central around a human being, right? Me, and that's an ego system. So I, I, I think the answer is both, and I think that, you know, I think like anything in life, there's a very fine line. I I often use, you know, Oprah to a bunch of spammy gurus. She just walked the fine line of inspiration and motivation just right to create all-time great billionaireship and like all-time great impact. Whereas, gosh, if she just turned an inch in the other direction. And if you look at her early career, she probably was in that lane and I think when she was able to squeak it a little bit more to the left, it took her to the stratosphere. Look, I think I'm walking a very fine line and I think that um, I think I'm walking it properly. And I think I believe that because I just clearly know myself best and know my motivations and I think that if you were to intimately look under the hood of my actions and career, you would see all the dollars I'm leaving on the table which I think usually tend to be the the motivator that forces people to get on the wrong side of the road of this eco-ego system that you talk about. And so I think the answer is both. Um, I very much thrive off the attention, the pressure, um, the admiration, the trolling and hating. It's all part of it. And, uh, and I think I'm capable and have broad enough shoulders and puffy enough chests to be able to deal with it. And so uh, the answer is both. And I think done right, done properly, by all standards of a seven person jury, I think it's the way to pull off great legacy and that's what I'm trying to do. What do you think, Steve? I agree. Seriously? Yeah. Good. All right. Thanks. Andrew wants to know, do you see skill sharing and teaching people skills as an alternative to education coming up in the sharing economy? Andrew, I do. Uh, Very simply, the answer is yes. Very simply, I believe the internet is gonna squeeze everything in the middle that doesn't provide value out of business over a 100 year period. And so everything's in the middle, really, between you and a thing. And uh, the education system is in the middle between you (laughs) and actually having the next chapter of your life in play monetizing, if you really think about it. At its grand scheme, you go to school, in theory, historically, the way it's been thought of, to set you up to monetize your thing. I mean, as we know, so many people go through the schooling and then realize they don't want to be a lawyer or a doctor or whatever they've been learning to do and they reset and they go into the open market. I think that that uh, needs to be thought about. I think that needs to really be thought about and we've never lived in a time where, I mean, look, it's, it, guys, at 30, years old, I began the first seed of thought that I should speak to the world about something. That happened to be wine at the time. I mean, there wasn't things like this podcast, this show, or the billions of pieces of content that live now that educate people at a level that we've never seen before. If there is anyone, if there is anyone that believes that unionized human beings and old textbooks can outperform education of information and thinking to the vast majority of human society and the internet, then you are a lost human being. Lost, with a capital L. And so, now what needs to happen is some organization. I mean, look, I actually believe the following statement. I actually believe one of the singular reasons that universities are in play 
is the romantic point of view that the parents of our current generation view on the institution. And I truly believe it's going to take only two more generations. Not necessarily mine, but my kids have no prayer of valuing Harvard and Stanford and a community college to the level it's valued by my parents. No shot in hell, I'm putting it, and I don't like to predict, but I'm putting it right here on film. You know, big ups to my little you know, grandchildren that are watching this now, 50 years from now. <laughs> hey, little Sarah, I love you. And, uh, and uh, you know, I just, uh, actually Sarah's gonna be so out of date by then. Hey, Zaruka, big fan. <laughs> Hope we're watching this together. Uh, and so, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, the Skillshares, the Khan Academies, the endless content on YouTube, the podcasts, the tremendous uh, impact that all the content that's living right now is having on the younger generation and how they will think that they, right now we have 15 year olds that think their two cents on every thought are public domain, that they need to add their two cents. What do you think when they become educated through school and not school, what they're gonna share and how, it's just gonna be so much information. Plus, our system right now is so predicated on teaching our kids to memorize something and then regurgitate it a couple of weeks later in a world where all that information is at their fingertips. And you know, nobody gives a shit who the 18th president of the United States is or, or what's the warmest planet. I can tell you in one fucking second, you idiots. I mean, it's just stupid. Anyway, what are you guys looking at? Sorry, this is the ink article. Got it. Got it. (laughs) (laughs) That's all I got. A lot of gray there at the end there for you. A little black and white action for you, D-Rock. Question of the day. I'm, I'm actually curious about this, so answer quickly because I know this is going in motion right now. Do you think that the Warriors hold on and win the championship or do you think LeBron pulls off historic game six and game seven victories? I wanna see in the comments who's gonna close out this NBA Finals. I'm curious, also part B, um, did you sign up for the podcast? Yes or no? Put a number two in the comment section and say yes or no. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. Uh, cool. Podcast question? Yes, let's do it. Cool. Find we'll find something. One. Uh, you can just go to wait, Twitter. Wait, actually, how, how about the, the fifth question that we didn't ask during the show? There's um, a fifth question? Yeah. You were running long, so I just figured. Got it. Yeah, all right, ready? Should we do the fifth and just plug it in? No, that'd be, you know what? Gray this whole thing, D-Rock. No, actually, don't gray it. Play it anyway, you know what I mean. <laughs> and then let's do this fifth question for the podcast. Ready, you're just gonna do the audio? Cool. Uh, Volker. Volker asks, 